Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to show you how you can set up a unit such as a port or an airport so that you can transfer cargo to and from it. Now this is kind of a big deal because uh, one of the recent additions they added were things like cargo containers and like pallets and stuff. So woo, we can play international shipping now, which is super exciting. So what I'm going to do is uh, show you kind of both variations of this real quick. So the first variation I'm going to do is we're going to deal with an airport. Now airports are a little interesting as far as how you kind of set them up. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a spot where it would be very amusing to have an airport. Hmm, where could we put an amusing airport? airport in the middle of New York City. Ah, uh, this looks pretty good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and create a pretty standard airport, though. Before I do that, though, let's go ahead and add some edit sides here. We're only going to have a blue four this time because uh, we don't need to, just for the purposes of examining, um, we're going to keep this pretty straightforward. Testa. I don't know why I call it that. I've been calling it that for like years. I think I misspelled test at one point. It just kind of got stuck. So let's go ahead and create ourselves an airport. Uh, airports in command are relatively straightforward. We just need a couple different components to it. First way I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get ourselves a runway. Uh, it's a pretty honking long runway there. Uh, one thing I like to do is measure the length of the runway because I'm just like that. So that's uh, 1.6. So that's about 32, 3,400 meters. Ah, my estimation was pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and check the heading on this one. It's a uh, runway 1.2. I don't think it's 1.2. I think it's like 1.3 or 1.4 in the real world on account of the fact that we have a magnetic variation. But one thing I will do real quickly is I'll just dial this in basically as close. Remember, this is true heading anyway, so that's what we want it to be. A lot of times what I'll do too is I'll come in here and say runway 14. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see, 36 minus 14, that would be 22. 14 plus 18. Ah, there you go. Runway 32. I knew that. <laughs> Cool. So once that's done, of course, uh, you have to add an access point to it. So let's go ahead and add some access points. I will say very large aircraft. Obviously, it's JFK. Go ahead and add a couple of those. Pretty good. Um, I'm going to add some fuel, because why not? Obviously, you need some AV gas. At some point, I believe they're going to make it so that all fuel is actually going to be consumed. So this is going to be a much more lucrative target. And then, of course, we're going to add ourselves a little armory here. I'll keep it real simple. Uh, we're not going to put any ammunition or anything crazy into it, because we just don't need to. Let's see here, ammo bunker surface, that looks pretty good to me. And then one more detail I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a warehouse. So I'm gonna go ahead and say large. It's a shame that we don't actually have a building that is a warehouse. Oh, we can know, there's a lot of different variations kind of a thing like this, but like having like that kind of tall, wide sort of building would be pretty cool. We have a lighthouse, I like that. All right, cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the name of this building, I'm just gonna call warehouse. Uh, now the reason I'm doing that is once I start putting this all together, I wanna have the ability to go ahead and actually um, put things into that warehouse that we can now load onto aircraft. Let's do a bunch of very large aircraft. Like I said, I just keep them pretty generic here. You don't even have to put a control tower or anything like that, but you know I am because I can. Let's say control tower, tower, that looks pretty good to me. And that's awesome. There is my version of JFK in uh, 30 seconds or less. Hit the G key, come over here, Kajifk. JFK. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a cargo carrying unit. So I'm going to come in here and I'll kind of keep it real simple. We'll do a C-130H. Uh, nothing too, too exciting as far as that goes. There we go. 2008 version 2. <laughs> so now we're ready to go ahead and set up the cargo aspect of this. Now what some people do is they like to come up here and mash the edit cargo button. If you do that, you're going to get a big angry error message saying you have to choose an individual unit, not a group. Um, that's because cargo is stored at units. It's not stored in the whole box. So I know it's very tempting to say, oh, put all the cargo so they spread it out. It doesn't work that way. So what I'm going to do is actually hit the 9 key on my keyboard. That's on the numpad, by the way, which is going to give me the ability to select individual units. I'm going to go up to my warehouse, then press edit cargo. Now, some people, when they hit this button, they go, well, what have you done? Um, don't panic. Don't panic. Hit the database button. And everybody goes, ah. It's much better than what I thought. So over here on the left, uh, this is the current cargo at the warehouse. Uh, this is my capacities. Obviously, I chose a warehouse for this, which gives me tons of space to operate on. I could put up to 2,800 people into my warehouse here, which that could be pretty entertaining. I'm not going to, but I could. So let's go ahead and be uh, real careful here. And you're going to notice you have things like ground units. The other thing you're going to notice is you're going to have, let me see if I can get it carefully today, containers. And now you have mobile facilities. And to make it even more fun, check this out you have mounts. So you have multiple different types of things that we can actually load or create as far as cargo goes. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and I keep this really simple. I'm going to go to ground unit, which is generally what I prefer. And let's go ahead and throw in some, uh, oh, the ADDs. Nice. That's sweet. I know there's a T model. When do they do that? Ah, you learn something every day. So let's go ahead into the M2A2. That's actually, we'll do the M2A3. We're going to add 12 of those. That's basically a company. And you can see that our mass is sucked up. You can see our area is sucked up. And you can see our packs are not sucked up at all because a Bradley is a Bradley. It's not an infantryman. So one thing I like to do to help me out a little bit is if you come over to the cargo size button and you bop that button, what it will do is it'll actually go ahead and sort them in terms of size. But the reason I like pushing that button is if I scroll down, you'll see there's a thing that says personnel. You see how useful that is? 
So what I like to do is just grab myself uh, some pretty typical infantry here. Now there's two different types of infantry. You have the mobile facility version of the infantry, and then you have the ground unit version of the infantry. Now let's say, for example, I want to actually populate my infantry company. Now I'm not an expert on uh, army or anything along those lines, so I'm just going to make this up as I go. So let's assume where we have, um, let's see, we'll each do one fire team each, so that's going to be 12 fire team leaders. We'll go ahead and do that. Our riflemen, we're going to assume that we have uh, probably 36 of those, and we're going to go ahead and add an automatic rifleman. We're going to say we have 12 of those, and we're going to add 12 assistant automatic riflemen. So what I have just done is I've created myself a mechanized company. And you can see coming down right here that it automatically calculates all the different number of people. Now you're probably saying, why are my PAX numbers at zero right now? I thought you added automated riflemen. Well, the way that they do this is if you're working with a ground unit, you won't have a PAX quantity. It'll simply be the mass and area of that unit. Now, if I come down here and say, oh, what I actually wanted to do is uh, put an infantry platoon in here. Let's say I want an infantry platoon Marines. Press one, load selected. Now, when I do that, you're gonna notice that it's going to recognize it as packs, but remember this is using the old mobile facility technique. Now you're saying, well, we've got to be careful with this because what if I'm dealing with something like a C-130? Aha, exactly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the 9 key again, click on my little airport, press the lovely F6 button. So I'm going to grab these two uh, C-130s. I'm going to cheat just a tiny bit. You can see we have a bunch of different options as far as uh, cargo goes. We can do paratroopers, we can do rangers, we can do troops. So what I'm going to do is uh, 19 tons of cargo, press ready immediately. So now what I'm going to do is grab mass cut one, and if you come to the bottom right corner, you're going to notice there's a new button that says cargo operations. I bop that button, and it's going to bring up a screen that looks like this. Now one of the great things here is they designed this so if you're dealing with mobile units, you're going to have them all grouped. If you do ground units, they're all going to be separate and into individuals. So just kind of keep that in the back of your head when you're working. Now coming down here, I've got all my fire teams and stuff like that now ready to rock. I have a platoon of Marines here, so I can come in here. Notice, by the way, the paratrop compatible. So if I go boop like that, it's going to go and slam it into the back of that C-130. So uh, those guys, my 16 guys, are all sitting there, I'm kind of queuing up, getting ready to rock kind of a thing. I like that. I'm going to press OK. Send over to these guys, hit Cargo Ops, and I'm going to go scroll down here. Um, let's see here. What do we want to add? Um, for some reason, I don't think, yeah, we can't fit a Bradley in the back of one of those. Too much area. So we'll go ahead and load one of those, load one of those, load one of those. Yeah, all the fire team leaders are going to enjoy the flight here. <laughs> Now notice because they're ground units is that they're individual. Um, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I can press the shift key and go through. Unfortunately, that's not an option. Uh, someday I'm sure it will be an option, but you can still easily manually kind of come in here and fill this aircraft up. Looking pretty good. I'm going to press the OK button. And now our two aircraft are ready to rock as far as cargo goes. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, that's not bad. So can I just hit the F6 key and come over here and oh, notice it takes time to load these aircraft, depending on how much you ask to get on board. So keep that in the back of your head. But now what it can do is, of course, launch individually and send them wherever, whenever, or it can set up a mission or anything like that. Now, there's another neat trick to this uh, cargo system. Watch this. So I'm going to come up to my, remember how I have my little warehouse? Uh, one day, I hope they add a little button, like a little, I don't know, a little infantry do, like somebody's head with like a circle or something. So I know that this unit is carrying cargo. That'd be awesome. Someday, someday. But if I come over here and hit edit cargo, uh, one of the cool things you can do is you can actually eject people from the warehouse house. So let's say I wanted to take my Bradley IFEs. I held down the shift key and select them all. I can come over here and press the unload selected button. And do you see how it says load or create units? These are all the units that are now in the vicinity of my warehouse. As a matter of fact, not only in the vicinity, but if I zoom in massively, I don't think I can zoom in far enough, I now have a bunch of Bradleys ready to rock. So I can actually come in here and I can select my Bradleys. You know, I can do the F3 key in order to move around. You can do one of these things and I kind of grab them all individually. One of the quick hacks is if you group them together, you can now come in here, you can hit the F4 key, and you, of course, since they're only uh, going to be grouped a non-group, I now have a group of groupers. So now I can grab that and go bop, bop, like that. And as soon as I hit the space bar key, uh, they're going to go we'll start driving away. Now, one of the slick tricks with this new cargo is that I can actually come in here and press, uh, let's see here, let's grab onto uh, this AV gas farm. If I could edit the cargo on these, you'll notice I can now grab local units and shove them into the cargo of the AV tank farm. I don't recommend this. Um, it's not a lot of space inside one of these gas farms, and it must be very uncomfortable, especially if you're, you know, in a Bradley or something like that. But you can see very quickly just how effective this can be for kind of moving kind of cargo around, kind of like having fun with it, loading them up and kind of sitting them in the way. Now, what I was saying earlier is there is a difference in cargo between airports and ship ports. Uh, let me show you why. 
So let's go ahead down to Staten Island here. Well, let's go ahead and pick a nice place to put a port. Well, that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab myself some components for a port. Oh, we need a pier. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a pretty big one here. Underground pier. I think that's so cool. Well, this looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to keep it. Whoopsies. It helps if you put it on land like a normal person would. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab the pier. Uh, extra large. Sounds pretty good to me. I like that. Press that. Go ahead and flip the suck around. Set orientation. Oh, by the way, check it out. You can change the pier size now. So I'm actually going to zoom out and go oh, just a teeny tiny bit bigger. I love that. That's a neat little feature. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add some bits to the pier here. Obviously, we need some diesel. D-I-E-S-E-L. Let's go ahead and press a 750 liter tank. That sounds good to me. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to put a crane because uh, why not? <laughs> actually, I should have done port crane. Oh, well. Come over here. We'll go ahead and add a bunker and put some bullets in it. Uh, of course, we could get all detailed, but I'm not going to get too far with that. Looks pretty good. Select all the oop. Uh, let's see. Call this. What do we want to call this? Port Jersey, I think it said. Port J-E-R-S-E-Y. Sounds good to me. And now we're ready to go ahead and uh, fill it up with some ships. So I'm going to press Control and press F7. Again, keep in mind we're in mode. Uh, let's see. LSD, I think, is what I'm going to go with today. Harper's Ferry, for sure. Give me two of those. I yeah, just one. Just one. I know it's got the capacity. So now if I tap the F7 key, you'll notice if I click on this one, there's a cool little option to load and unload cargo. And you should probably recognize this screen uh, pretty much right away. It's the same as we saw before. Obviously, we haven't loaded any cargo yet, so we can't do much of that. So now that we've got this all set up, I'm going to press the F9 key. I'm going to grab ourselves our ammo. Actually, what we should do is let's add my warehouse. A large building. Ah, one of these days, I'll be able to control A there. Building large. A lighthouse. Yeah, let's build a bunch of infantry and lighthouse. Sounds good to me. Rename. Warehouse of stuff. I like that. So let's go ahead and uh, hit our cargo again. I'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, notice, by the way, we can grab onto those. We don't want to. I'll uh, we'll hit this button real quickly. Uh, we'll keep it pretty simple. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't have a filter bias. It does. What am I talking about? Pfft, duh. T72. Boing. All right, see here. There's some ground units. We'll keep it old school here. We'll grab a bunch of T72s here. We'll make it three. Oh, sounds pretty good. So now we have plenty of T72s there. Go press the nine key. I'm going to click on our little handy dandy. Whoops. Helps if you actually grab the thing. Hey, don't want to do that. All fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my port itself. You might notice that they are grouped. I'm going to press the F7 key. Click on my LSD and go ahead and click on load and unload cargo. And you will notice there are no units here. The way that ports are done, they're not grouped the same way that airports are. If you want to have things that you can pick up at a port, you have to actually integrate it directly into the pier itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that lovely 9 key again. And this time I'm going to click on the pier. The pier, not that little building that was part of my port. Now I'll press edit cargo real quick. And now we can go over to database. We can go ahead and add in our T72s. C72, I know it's going to be some other country. T82, I've invented something new. That looks pretty good there. We'll do three, load selected, and press nine again. Click on my port, press the F7 key, and check a look. Ta-da! See how they're waiting for us and ready to go. So it's important that you link the ports correctly. So now the cool thing is I can uh, load all. But unfortunately, the way that they have this set, like I said, one of these days, I'll be able to hold down the shift key and go bang, 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 or something like that. But um, that does work pretty well. And you can see that now we're able to put those loaded ones on. I'll press the OK key. I can grab onto the ship. And at any point, of course, we can go ahead and launch it, which is exactly what I intend to do. So it's going to take a few minutes to get this thing underway. Speed up time. Apparently, they uh, need to load the ship molecule by molecule. We are, ah, 50 minutes. Did he just launch? He did. <laughs> Sweet. So now if I come over here and click on the Harper's Ferry, I can go over to Edit Cargo, and you're going to notice that these guys are here, and you'll also notice those local units are actually still here. So I could actually technically do one of those. Look at this. I can actually grab the Bradley all the way from over here, which is a pretty slick trick if you ask me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and order him to return back to base. And, of course, his base is right over there. He's going to turn around and give him plenty of time to get in position. Go. All right. I like how I can go right through and maintain uh, downtown there. <laughs> it's got to be slightly awkward, kind of like the movie Speed. If I hit the F7 key, I can go ahead and select on them. I can press the unload option, and I can actually eject all of the cargo that we have here. Delightful. Press the OK button. Uh, let's give him 13 minutes to eject everything. That yeah, looks pretty good there. Hit F7, and now if I click on him one more time, whoops, I'm going to assign him to the proper mission here. Uh, load, unload cargo. Let's see what we got here. Nothing. Now, here's the cool part. If I press the 9 key and I click on the port itself and at edit cargo, you'll notice that those units that we loaded into here are now inside of the cargo of the pier that he docked at. Sweet. All right, so that should conclude it. By the way, uh, pallets and all that stuff are handled the exact same way. So that concludes our little video on just kind of showing you how you can set up cargo operations for different types of ports. Uh, the big difference to watch out for is airports 
treat the whole airport as a unit uh, when you're dealing with piers and ports. I treat the whole port as a unit. And yes, there is a single unit port, just in case you're curious. If you come in here and type in single unit, uh, you're going to discover that there's a single unit port. You can actually now put everything in one operation. And uh, one of the things I get a kick out of this particular structure is it includes a lot of the different pieces that you're going to need, a bunch of piers and everything, pretty much ready to rock and um, all set for you. Other than that, enjoy.